Good morning and welcome to our online service on Sunday the 7th of March 2021. Before I wrote this, Mark, Holly and I had been out for a walk. It was quite warm, a little bit of a breeze, the sun was shining. Spring definitely felt like it was on the way. Spring is my favourite season. I love to see the earth come into life all around us. The flowers, buds on trees, to hear the birds singing. It reminds me too of the new life that we can experience as Christians. Easter is not too far ahead, but let us not get ahead of ourselves. There are still a few weeks to go, time to contemplate on this season. The wonder of what God did for each one of us through his son. May we each take the time to do just that. Today we complete our series on prayer. We are looking at Paul's prayer for the Colossians and how this can be a framework for our own prayers. But first of all, let us turn to a song. When you feel weakest, danger surround. The chorus of this song says, Keep on believing Jesus is near. Keep on believing there's nothing to fear. Keep on believing this is the way, faith in the night as well as the day. In all circumstances of our lives, we can be reassured that Jesus is with us if we keep on believing.
For our band piece this morning, we're going to listen to an arrangement by Ken Downey of the song, Lord, You Know That We Love You, played for us today by the New York Staff Band.
Our Bible reading today is taken from Colossians chapter 1 and verses 9 to 12. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Amen. We're going to watch the last of our self-denial videos just now. After the video has played, we're going to spend a little time in reflection. There will be some music playing. You can then make your own prayers for the work of the Salvation Army in the countries we have been supporting. Today would have been our self-denial altar service. We have already received some of your offerings. Thank you. But there is still time for you to send your gifts to help our brothers and sisters all around the world in their mission for God's kingdom. Hello and welcome to the last of our films for this year's Self-Denial Appeal. This week, I'll be making a call to Pakistan, which is one of our partners in mission, along with Denmark and Greenland, Finland and Estonia, Ghana, including Togo, and South America East. We featured Pakistan in the 2016 self-denial appeal, when Kerry Coke visited the country. Pakistan has very much been the main focus for me and Rebecca for the last two years, and even though our plans have changed, we still feel very connected. Today I'll be talking to Fozia Columbus. When Kerry was making an episode about education, she met Fozia as she took her girls to school. The family would have been our next door neighbours had things worked out differently for us, so I'm really pleased to be able to connect with her today. The girls have grown and Fozia is now the core based community development manager at Territorial Headquarters in Lahore. And she looks after some of the projects funded by Self Denial. Salam, Major Kozia. Oh, salam, Captain Ben. <laughs> uh, nice to see you. How are you? I'm absolutely fine. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Tick tack. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and um, how, are your, how are your children? They are doing good. And at the moment, they are at home uh, because, of the co because of the COVID, the school are closed. And uh, almost the one year, they are at home. We'd be so interested to know how has it been for the Salvation Army and its mission in 2020 with all that's, the, all that's gone. Could you tell us a bit about that? When the country was locked down, that was not easy time for, especially for the poor, those who are uh, uh, facing difficulty to get food. But I'm glad that the Salvation Army did uh, tremendous work within the communities. We are serving communities without discriminations. Mm -hmm. We provide food, grocery to the poor, and uh, uh, health and safety kits to, to the poor. Uh, and that really uh, uh, good effort and get that really good initiative by the Salvation Army Pakistan. Mm. And, and how about the, the cause in Pakistan? How, how many cause do you have roughly and, and have they been able to meet throughout 2020? We do have 132 uh, cause in Pakistan and more than 300 active offices we have in Pakistan. We have 43 cadets uh, at the moment in our training college. We are not allowed to open the church, but our offices and uh, uh, our local offices uh, they connect uh, the communities with phone or with, via the social media. But our officers, they did uh, really good work uh, on, uh, on the COVID. And uh, we face COVID and the flood at the same time. But uh, the churches and the NGOs and the Salvation Army, they come out uh, from their uh, offices, from their homes, and they serve the communities. Uh, for the personnel, our offices, they enhance their capacity building. And from the last three years, our five offices serve in 
uh, um, different course in UK and one officer, she is working in the IHQ. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, I, I believe that for the Pakistan territory, this is good, um, encouraging for us. Well, I think for us, I think it's I think it's been such a great example of the mutuality of support. It's not just support flowing one way. We've needed the reinforcements from the Pakistan territory to to show us their experience, to to lead in the ways that they know are successful, and uh, just to bless our territory. Yeah. Fozia, tell us about your hopes and dreams for your family, your ministry, and and for the wider Salvation Army. Uh, my hope. And dreams for my girls should be the good Christians, independent women, courageous women. This is my dream. My dream for my ministry, when I give myself to God and I say yes to him. And I believe that since from that day to till now and till my death, he is always with me. And he will take me and he will guide me and he will show me the way where he will be take me and I always say yes to him and the dream for the Salvation Army and uh, for the Pakistan through our love, our support and our uh, call, uh, we will uh, make good disciple for the Jesus Christ. Thank you for inspiring our territory and being partners with us. And um, yeah, thank you for saying yes all those years ago yes. and keeping saying yes. <laughs> and thank you so much for your time and your inspiration. So God bless you. God bless you too. Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Well, that brings us to the end of our self-denial films. I wanted to find out how the Salvish Army has adapted to the pandemic. And while I've gained just a snapshot of what's happening around the world, I've been really inspired by the people I've talked to. I've heard how Salvationists and Friends have been coping with a host of different crises. Typhoons, cyclones, flooding and economic hardship. Along with all the difficulties that this pandemic has brought. And I've heard about the incredible resilience of communities where the Salvation Army is at work. I loved what Nana Togo said about showing love when you can't be physically together. There are plenty of challenges ahead. Poverty is widespread and the Salvation Army has limited resources. But I feel more convinced of the vital work that needs to be done. Work that is possible because of the money that is given through self-denial. Richard Bradbury reminded us that this is the Salvation Army's international self-denial appeal. We are all involved. And while each of us here reflect prayerfully on what we can give, Salvationists around the world are doing the same. For our self-denial altar service, we invite you to remember in prayer our Salvation Army family in Denmark and Finland. In South America East. in Ghana in Pakistan we pray that God may bless their work and make them fruitful for the kingdom's sake Lord accept the offerings made May they be used to help others, and in so doing, magnify your name. Lord, at this time of great need for the whole world, we pray that vaccines and provision will be given not only to those who have much, but also to those who have little. We invite you to make your own prayers in these remaining moments.
the singing company are going to sing a song which has words we will all know, but set to a new tune. Well, it's new to me anyway. Enjoy as the sing company sing for us this morning. Dare to be a Daniel. Part of Paul's prayer framework is thanksgiving. Our second song reminds us of all that we have to be thankful for. As we sing together, I will offer up my life. Deserve my every breath For you paid the 
An elderly gentleman passed his granddaughter's room one night and overheard her repeating the alphabet in an oddly reverent way. He asked her, What on earth are you up to? She explained, I'm saying my prayers, but I can't think of exactly the right words tonight, so I'm just saying all the letters. God will put them together for me because he knows what I'm thinking. Do you ever feel like that? Unsure of exactly the right words to say when praying? I know that I do. There are those occasions when life seems completely overwhelming, when we cannot put into words what we are feeling or the right words just won't come. What do we do when we are in that position? I'm guessing that most of us don't start to recite the alphabet. Well, I often fall back on reciting other prayers, such as the Lord's Prayer, or just sit in silence, knowing that the Holy Spirit will intercede on my behalf. But it's also good to have a framework of prayer for those occasions too, such as the rooms of prayer I mentioned a few weeks ago. Here in Paul's letter to the Colossians, we find he is writing to encourage them. The words we have read today come towards the start of the letter, and read like Paul's prayer for the people hearing them. Viewed this way, the passage gives us some insight into Paul's prayer life and is an encouraging framework for our prayers today. Personally, I love the fact that Paul tells the Colossians that he has been praying for them. I think it's something we often neglect to do. We pray for people, but do we tell them that we have? I know I always feel encouraged and loved when people tell me that they have been praying for me. It shows that we care, that we haven't forgotten about people. Knowing how this makes me feel, I am not very good at telling others when I have prayed for them. Something for me to work on. But then Paul goes on to say that he has prayed that the Colossians will grow in their knowledge of God and live lives that are modelled on Jesus. This requires more than theoretical mind-based knowledge. It requires action, living out faith in our everyday behaviour. As I was writing this, the post came, not unusual you might say, but it brought a letter from Ellesmere Port Salvation Army, a letter saying that they had been praying for Mark and I, a wonderful illustration of people living out their faith in their everyday behaviour, taking the time to write and send a letter to cheer someone else's day. It is a lesson for us all. It's a lesson for me. It's good to have a theoretical mind-based knowledge of God, but that is not enough. Our lives and the way we live them need to reflect this mind-based knowledge. What is in our heads needs to come out in our actions towards others. James says this in chapter 2 and verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? And so in our framework for prayer, we need to remember to pray that God will continue to reveal himself through what we read in his word, but also through the actions he calls us to. It's also important for us to remember that all work uses strength, either mental or physical, and it's noticeable here in Paul's letter that he doesn't request that the Colossians path be smoothed. At the time of writing this letter, Paul was in prison. His life was in no way smooth at this point in time. He is extremely aware that life often brings hardships, but we can see how his message, whilst joyful, is rooted firmly in reality. He knows that in life there is no magic wand even for those who have chosen to follow Jesus. He does not ask for the means to make life smooth for himself or for the Colossians. He asks instead for endurance and patience, qualities to strengthen people as they grow in faith. Such personal attributes only develop through practice. I am certain that for most of us hearing this message today, life has not always been plain sailing. There have been storms, bumps in the road, testing times. Have there been times when we have wished for a magic wand, something that would make our lives smoother? I'm sure there have been times when we have asked for this. We're only human after all. 
but we all come to the realisation that God does not perform magic tricks. And so we need to ask for God to grant us instead ways in which we can grow in endurance and patience. I read this about patience. A man's car stalled in the heavy traffic as a light turned green. All his efforts to start the engine failed and a chorus of honking behind him made matters worse. He finally got out of his car and walked back to the first driver and said, I'm sorry, but I can't seem to get my car started. If you'll go up there and give it a try, I'll stay here and blow your horn for you. Endurance and patience take practice. It can be so much easier to react in a negative manner and with great impatience when something happens to upset our day. We don't often stop to think about what might have caused the problem and if there is anything that we could do to help. But if our faith is to be lived through our actions, then developing the attributes of patience, endurance and thinking of others will be of great benefit to us. So in our framework of prayer, we can put in the request for God to help us to develop these characteristics to enable us to be more like Jesus in our everyday lives. After his requests come thanksgiving and a reminder of Jesus saving grace. We're made worthy to inherit a place in God's kingdom of light through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, not through any action of our own. This is a constant theme in the New Testament, to give thanks to God. The early church lived through such difficult days as they were persecuted for their beliefs. As was mentioned earlier, Paul and others were imprisoned because of the good news they wanted to share. And yet, they were always encouraged to give thanks to God in all circumstances. In our framework for prayer, it's important for us to acknowledge that thanksgiving needs to be a vital part. Even in the worst of our circumstances, we continue to have much to be thankful to God for. On those days when we are struggling to find the words to convey our deepest thoughts, we can always find something to give thanks for. When I think back to the darkest points in my life, when I was finding it hard to come up with any words, I am thankful that there were other people praying for me, saying those words which I could not find to say. I am thankful because I know that God was with me, carrying me through those days. I was thankful because of the people that were around me, knowing when to speak and when there were no words that it was okay to just be silent, to hold my hand. Perhaps some of you can identify with my thoughts as you have gone through similar times. Let us never forget to give God our thanksgiving, not least because of his saving love, mercy and grace. But when we stop and think about it, there will be so much more that we can and should say thank you to him for. I recently bought a weekly gratitude journal so that at least one day every week I can take some time to stop and consider all that I have to be grateful to God for. A discipline that we would all do well to try and encompass in our lives. Like people in the early church, we're all works in progress. And Paul doesn't criticise us for any shortcomings. He thanks God for who we are, prays we continue to grow in faith, and encourage us to be open to the Holy Spirit, strengthening us from within. Paul's words here in Colossians are an encouraging framework for our prayers. And so on those days when we are struggling to find the words, instead of repeating the alphabet, let us turn to these words in Colossians. Let us be thankful that God has made us who we are. Let us ask God to continue to help us grow in our faith and to share that faith with others in our words and in our actions. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to fall upon us once again, to strengthen us, to renew us for all that God has planned for us. Our prayers are important, so let us ensure we make the most of our times with God, to keep our communication lines open, to listen as well as talk, to grow ever closer to the one who loves us and supports us in all the varied circumstances of our lives 
we find ourselves in. The Song of Peace for today is a song that contains words which remind us that on the darkest of days, when we cannot find the words to pray for ourselves, we can know that if we share our grief and pain, others will be praying for us. May we be willing to incede on behalf of others when the need arises too. Listen and perhaps be challenged today as the songsters sing, Somebody Prayed For Me.
We conclude our meeting today with To God Be The Glory, but not the one you're probably all thinking of. The first verse says, To God be the glory, a saviour is mine, whose power is almighty, whose grace is divine. My heart he hath cleansed, he is dwelling within, so wondrously saving from sinning and sin. The last verse is a line which says, So with him communing, like him I shall grow. In this week that lies ahead, may each one of us continue to commune with our God and become more like him each and every day. Goodbye and God bless.